So Kay, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being up for this. I really appreciate it. Are you okay? Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to speak to you. Yeah, I really love the group and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you very much. So, Kay, the reason I wanted to talk to you is I thought we could share a little bit of, of uh, experience of the speaking industry mm. because we're both on the other side. We're on the side of actually booking the speakers. Um, yeah. And the industry is quite complex because you have managers, you have agents, you have mm. bureaus. And then we're all sort of a mix of that. And I thought we could compare yeah. notes. Um, so, so you, super. You're the founder of Androm Andromeda Talent. So first of all, give yeah. us a bit of background as to when you founded the organisation and why. What, what, what made you want to do that? Um, I'm a relative newbie. Andromeda has been going for, oh, we're coming up for 15 months. Um, so um, we've got through that elusive first year. And prior to that, I was based within a larger talent agent called the Artist Partnership, which originally was actors and directors and had grown and added commercial division and literary division and I became a small subdivision of that and it had got to a point and I'd worked for the company on and off for 16 years it got to a point where I realized that if I wanted to develop the speaking hosts and special guest department I was going to have to move out of the agency and that's when Andromeda was born um, so yes so I'm now I'm the boss which is um, I love it and I hate it in sort of equal measure on every day. Um, but yeah, so I came from a big agency and Andromeda is now my baby. And actually you worked with some quite big names, didn't you? Are we allowed to name drop? Yeah. We, oh, oh, give, me a, give me a hint and I'll drop some names. So, oh, drop some yeah. names, drop some names. <laughs> so the Artist Partnership represents people like Idris Elba, um, Emily Blunt, Harvey Keitel, um, David Suchet, Martin Shaw, um, as well as people throughout, you know, it takes on newbies, um, right through, you know, all, everyone you can see. And my family's consistently getting annoyed with me with going, oh, look, there's David. And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like the guy playing the, the dragon master in Game of Thrones or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, I was really lucky. And, um, for example, with Idris, um, I got to be on his team many years ago before he was Idris Elba. Um, and he's one of the loveliest men you'll ever meet, as well, well as I, one of the most uh, handsome. Okay, re <laughs> rewind, rewind. You've got to introduce me. Okay, I'm going to talk yeah. about that later. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So anyway, let's let's go, let's talk about speakers oh, oh, who are yeah. equally exciting. Equally exciting. Yes. Um, how many do you currently have on your roster? Because of course you're starting out. Have you have you gone big yeah. already? So when I started out, the first three months, I tried to represent everybody. Else in the world um, I think probably because I come from a big agency I was used to working with rosters of three four hundred people you know and all that sort of stuff and I very quickly realized that that way on your own madness lies so I totted up today how many I look after and we'll talk a bit about how directly I work with them but overall across all the three departments of my business there's about 110 but there's about 10 speakers that I directly manage, interact with on a usually nearly daily basis, kind of. They say, I say jump and they say, how high do you want me to jump? And I say, you know, that sort of level of management. So there's probably on the speaking side, there's 35 overall that I deal with very regularly and 10, which are my special ones. Do you know, and that's really interesting because it's a very different model to the traditional bureau model. Um, yeah. So you have a much smaller roster and you give them a much more focused uh, service from what you're saying. And we'll, we'll talk about yeah. that a little bit more uh, because our roster has more than 4,000 speakers on it. Wow. I know. Cool. Uh, and so there'll be years where you don't actually book somebody. You know, you might yeah. not. Um, and of that 4,000, you will, 20% of those people will be booked regularly. And then 20% yeah. of that 20% will be the guys that are most yeah. booked. Um, but you have to, as a, because a bureau is like a warehouse, really. Um, yeah. and, and you're right, it's very interesting. You've got to be careful the relationship of what you promise because you can come yeah. unstuck. So that's fascinating that we're quite different there. So uh, we, I call them speakers. You call your organization, I call them speakers or experts. You call yeah. yourself talent so you're andromeda talent. Yeah. did you take that because of where you've come from or do you refer to your speakers as talent 
Um, a little from column A and a little from column B. Because the three parts of the business, which are the speakers and experts, um, the hosts and MCs, and then the special guests or um, personal appearance side, um, I needed a term that covered everybody. I needed people to feel when, I, when one of my actors that I booked to appear at Comic-Con meets one of my speakers on leadership, I was able to say, you're both part of the talent. So that's where it came from. It also fit in nicely with the name, but also like you say, it's my background. And one of the things in that first kind of three to six months of building the business was I remember one of my dear clients who I manage begging me not to give up on the talent management side and saying, cause that's where your real gold lies. And that was a massive turning point. That was the point where I stopped trying to represent everybody in the world and kind of looked at things and goes, okay, so if, at the core of it comes management, what I need to do for the kind of the bureau or the booking side, because we all need access to lots of speakers for when ours aren't available or whatever, is build relationships with, yes, other speakers, but other agents, other bureaus, other bookers, and have that network, which actually, when I thought about it, was something that I'd been doing on the talent side all along. And it was one of those real epiphanies. You kind of went, ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you know what? I think the future of business and in fact, the present successful businesses oh. have great networks and have great yeah. collaborations and great. Sometimes it's co-opetition because you cooperate, yeah. but you also compete a little. So, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. so I like I, that. Yeah. do you like that? It's an old, it's an old yeah. term, actually, and I can't remember who I've pinched it from, but it is it is it is good. It's, it's yeah. uh, co-opetition. Um, so you've referred to some of the similarities. What are the similarities and differences have you found between your old world and this new world? world of speaking um what's i don't know the differences are and one of the the kind of differences that i love is the freedom i find in the speakers industry so the idea that you can say to a speaker okay so you know we usually specialize you in leadership i've had somebody say they want you to talk on resilience and lead a workshop for the work experience trainees and the speaker will go brilliant whereas in the old world particularly because i was in a big agency and it was a very successful agency you know there were there were kind of rules and procedures and oh well have they come to us to, you know there was a lot of it wasn't even just about ego it was kind of like oh well i would charge that I, you know i feel a lot more freedom in this industry to be like okay, what's the specific situation that I'm in? Who am I talking to? What do they want them to do? Who are they talking to? Do we want to do it? You know, and that, that freedom is something that is still the film, film TV and theatre world feels quite archaic, whereas this always feels like you're on the cusp of the front of something. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, that's one of the things that's most exciting because you can shape yeah. things as long as the speaker has the ability um, and has the knowledge and has the expertise. Yeah you are free to do so much more. Um, and I think yeah. also, I mean, we won't go into it, but I suspect there's, it's, it's lot, a lot less restricted in terms of contractual and paperwork and bureaucracy. I think yeah. bureaus certainly yeah. are, much, are much freer than agents and managers yeah. in that respect. And I mean, one of the things that was an issue when I was within the big agency is big agencies like that claim sole representation or exclusive representation for all their clients for everything. Even if they have an American agent, it's a very strictly done deal. Whereas here with, and we'll, I'm sure we'll touch on this a bit, some of my speakers that I don't directly manage, um, they might work with different people on different things, they might have a literary agent or whatever. And my vibe has always been, if I know about it, I'm cool with it. If I'm aware of it, I can shape things and approach things knowing things with the full situation if you suddenly pull a literary agent out when I've got you to meet with a publisher I'm going to be cross um, and that's something that I could never do in the agency and when I started representing speakers on my own and you know maybe they'd have a voiceover agent the the agency sort of didn't have the facilities to like have that in-house 
It sounds like you're very flexible in your approach and very open-minded, and yet you've come from something very restrictive. I see, I see you blossoming here with yes. all this freedom. It's great. It's <laughs> so yeah. tell me, you have three different ways of working. You touched on it yeah. earlier. Can you explain your three different ways of working with your, with your three different types of speakers? Yeah. So much? yeah? Um, and I sort of feel like it's, it's a pond and it's ripples. So we've got like the inside, which is the big ripple, which is my speaker management. That's the ones where I say day to day, it might be, you know, we might not speak to them for three days, but it's, you know, if they're going to appear on a podcast, I'll know about it, even if it's not paid, you know, all their speaking leads come to me, even if it's for a bureau, um, you know, all those things get run past me. And I, I have a co-agent in another agency that I work with quite closely on endorsement and branding. And quite often we share clients and we run their calendars in association with their EAs, all that, that sort of really hands-on stuff, which is very satisfying, but very intense. And I learned pretty quickly that you can't deliver that on your own to a high number of people. Um, and some of my managed clients include Yasmin abdel um John Adams, Dad Blog UK, um, Selma El-Wadani, who's BBC Radio London presenter, an amazing poet, um, Cat Sims, influencer on Instagram, people like that. So that's the first level. And then the next ripple is kind of the booker level. And this is more variable. This is a lot of amazing speakers that I was introduced to or met, usually in the, when I was still in the big agency. And it's so interesting because they have their own careers, they're experts in their field, which is why I love them. Um, or, you know, maybe they're a broadcaster or whatever, and they don't necessarily have lots of bureaus working for them. So I'm sort of their sole booker, but they're not speaking every week. You know, maybe it's six engagements a year, maybe it's three. And then we have like the biggest ripple, which is the kind of the bureau one, which is the network I've built of different speakers. And actually, one I realised quite quickly, as well as other speakers' agents and speakers' bureaus, like I went to the talent agencies that I knew and could say, I know your background, I know how you operate, but you've got these amazing presenters, comedians, or whatever. I will be respectful of your relationship, but if there's an opportunity, I will be able to bring it to you. So yeah, sort of the, sounds great. Sounds great. Sounds brilliant. So, so what's your criteria for bringing on new speakers? So, um, it's so funny because I'm in talks with a new speaker at the moment and he, he rang me up and um, he said, oh, my, my friend recommended you because you met her. At, she heard you speak at a networking meeting and she said, I had to get in touch. And I said, well, I never say my books are closed. I never say they're closed because you might miss an opportunity. But I said to him, at the moment, I'm really focusing on my efficiency, on my systems. And we had a chat. And by the end of the chat, I, you know, we were both laughing. And, I, and he said, you're going to meet me for coffee, aren't you? And I said, of course I am. He said, it was like, um, he was an ex-stand-up comic who worked in the corporate world. And, you know, he had an amazing journey. Um, all that sort of thing. And he was, he was wonderful to talk to. And when I thought about it, it comes down to potential. And that's a really massive word. Potential I can see for them to earn me money and to earn themselves money, to develop what they've got without them being at absolute step one and kind of where, where we could go on a journey together. Um, one of the things I've, I'm currently reading, and I'm sure I'm very behind the times, I'm reading Story Brand at the moment, and the idea of story behind speakers, I realise that's probably from my background of film and telly, is I love a good story. That doesn't mean it has to be a sub story or you know survival or anything like that, but um, somebody like Yasmin is a classic example of... Her, she uses her story in the best way possible in her speaking to address what she needs to address, whether it be unconscious bias, whether it be AI, tech, leadership, millennial engagement, you know, the, the story, she knows how to use that 
to engage and connect with people. And it sounds flippant to say, when you know, you know. And the last year has been fascinating because I've had two instances where I took people on against my gut instinct for some reason. Like one, I thought I could make a lot of money out of them. Quite honest about that. And the others, like I love the story. And those relationships have, I say ended, not, not angrily. We, you know, we still are in contact. And I'm sure if I took them an opportunity, they would. But it said to me, there's something that's a bit magical, a bit X factorish about kind of story, potential fit that you know as, a, as an agent or manager. That you, know, you know it's so difficult because we get approached so much and the thing is yeah. I, I mix a lot with speakers as well and yeah. you like people and you want to help them but yeah. realistically you can't you know you haven't got no. the capacity you haven't got the capacity but it's very difficult sometimes to say no to somebody and you say yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then when it doesn't work it's really it's very difficult and I'm, mm. I'm, I'm I'm tempted to ask you if the person you're talking about because of this background of stand up then went into corporate uh, I, this, does this person talk about identity theft for chance? Um, no, but I do know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not say anymore. But no. the one I'm talking about, is, I, I'm sure your guys. Great. And it's yeah. interesting as well. You said that a friend introduced you. See, I personally don't like having introductions via other speakers or via other friends. I would rather no. have a client say to me, "This is the speaker." You oh know. yeah, yeah, I know definitely. And it was a bit naughty as well because the lady had said to me. Like I've met her at a networking meeting, she seemed lovely. And when you say what you do, people always say, I know a speaker for you. And at the networking meeting, I'd actually been talking about what is helpful for me is if people say, I know a contact who runs events or I know somebody that had somebody speak last year. That's what's useful to me. You know, we can reach out to hundreds and thousands of speakers. Yeah. Um, and she had actually, because she had my card, she'd actually passed on my details, sort of without my okay. It's worked out this time. <laughs> yeah, but it is difficult. And, and actually, we yeah. do often say our roster is closed because we just can't cope. Well, we're, cope yeah, I mean, 4,000, yeah. Yeah, yeah with the, on the roster currently, but yeah, 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 you're right, yeah. Can't cope with the new inquiries. There's just so many speakers. Out. But that, anyway, that's a different topic for another time. Yeah. So, um, uh, let's see, because uh, I could talk to you all day. What, what trends <laughs> are you seeing? You're, you're new to this, uh, in yeah. a way, but 15 months, you'll have seen some trends. What, what are the trends you've yeah. spotted? So, interestingly, I sort of, I've basically tripped over a large trend, um, and that has been through my work with Yasmin and Salma, um, who are both um, female, uh, millennial generation, um, outspoken Muslim girls and um, they're both known as influencers um, as experts in their own field on diversity and inclusion um, they're also two of the most intelligent fascinating speakers I've ever come across um, and I, I'm sure you get this that feeling when you you know and we've seen speakers speak and do their classic keynotes a hundred times I still get the chills when I see those girls speak um, and their capacity to I'm seeing people wanting to see themselves represented in work in on stage when they're seeing people speak and yes maybe that's diversity but it's also about millennial engagement um, I'm seeing I'm being approached by younger organizations younger planners who are saying you know, I want to shake things up. Um, and particularly, I mean, with Yasmin, I've, I've been thrown in the deep end there because she's incredibly popular in the States. So I found myself six months into business dealing with, um, you know, 15 or 20 bureaus in the States, booking her all over there, um, which has been a steep learning curve, but fascinating. Um, and I'm really lucky. I've been embraced by some speaker managers over there who've sort of taken me under their wing um but seeing what she can do there and she's gone into massive corporates like visa um i'm trying to think now i she did ibm think she corning which is a company in the town of corning because basically everybody is employed there and their head of diversity was like look we employ you know men who are average 50 white worked all their lives 
and they had Yasmin come in and you know it was the joy of someone like her going into there is it's always positive and that's what I'm seeing people want this kind of shake-up but they want it positive they don't want to be told off they don't want to be told they're wrong they don't want to be told they're racist or you know you're not doing this you're not doing that they just it's about this positive engagement and actually that's really exciting yeah that's lovely that's nice i like that and, and girl power yay yeah. <laughs> so that's all good too um what have you found most challenging would you say um <laughs> what have i found most challenging so interestingly as i mentioned those two speakers that has taught me an enormous amount about I talk a lot to my speakers about being authentic and um, how that doesn't necessarily be being brutally honest or being open or overly, overly sharing, but it means being authentic. And, and that's been my biggest thing is like, I, at the beginning made a lot of promises I couldn't keep, but just through time, you know, working with now it's 10, but at the time trying to cover 35 to that level, and I'd, I'd have great conversations and say, we should do this, this and this, and I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll do that. You know, I'm one woman, I'm a superwoman, but I'm one woman, you know, um, and being authentic and realistic while still working my bum off um, is something that's really come through because, you know, I've seen with the 10, when I focus on it, good things happen. Yeah, you sound, you sound like me. I totally get it. Uh, you've got all these brilliant ideas. You want to do them yesterday. You can't because yeah. you are human. And also things come along and disrupt you. But yeah. I'll tell you what, you'll get there. It just take you a bit longer yeah. than expected. You will get yeah. there. I, I can feel you. So this, and finally, what, what advice can we leave speakers with, do you think, with regards to, I mean, you know, choosing a representative or, or even getting out there and speaking? Is there any little nuggets that you and I can share? Um... So I think probably my first thing is don't expect any agent, booker or bureau to be a magician. Um, and this is probably something. So if they ask you for video, for website, for testimonials, go get them, do your homework. We do ours, you do yours. Um, but also it is a partnership. And even if that's somebody you've not spoken to for nine months, and I had it recently with one of my level two clients who literally rang me up when I was on the way to an event he said I've just cc'd you into an email this has come through LinkedIn um but he has mentioned that he saw it on one of your posts on LinkedIn so blah blah, blah. and I was like okay he was like this is what I think we should offer and we did it and I might not speak to that guy again I mean fingers crossed he gets the job but you know I might not speak to him again for three months but I still feel that the relationship we have is open and honest enough that I want to keep working for him. And that's the great truth. No, we don't want, you know, I mean, gifts are lovely, but nobody needs to bribe us and we don't need to be showered with compliments. But it is a partner, professional partnership that deserves trust and respect on both sides. Um, I, I want to high five you. Can I, can I high five you? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, lovely. And the, the first part, of, I mean, that's a masterclass you've just given in an answer. Mm -hmm. but the, first part, the first part is so vital. You know, you want me to represent you, you want me to sell you, you want me to put you forward. Yeah. And you haven't got decent video. You haven't then, when I booked you, got a high res photo that I can use. And there are some big names out there that don't have decent high res photos. Mm -hmm. I'll drop the names oh. afterwards. We won't do it on video. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, and then they don't have, you know, a decent introduction to bring them onto stage. They don't have a world. But yeah, yeah, all of that kind of stuff, the basics, please get the basics right and do them really, yeah. really well. Because the easier you make it for us to book you, the more yeah, often the more we book you. you. Yeah. And I think I saw Sean say it. Answer your phone, answer your text, answer your emails. If I'm ringing and saying, are you available next Tuesday? Give me the answer. I'll fill you in when I've had the call or whatever. But I need to know, you know, the number of times that you've emailed a and you know they're checking their emails because if it was an offer of work, they would have checked it. But if you're saying, oh, are you available for this? Or would you do it for this budget? We need quick answers. Um, 
Yeah, clients don't hang about and actually they want a choice. And I find that if somebody's slow, they just don't get included. I've got one at the moment. I've got to chase him. I've been waiting since Wednesday afternoon, which doesn't sound long, but the client wants to sign it off today. And guess what? I don't think we're going to do it because I don't think I'm going to get an answer in time. And I shouldn't have to chase because this is a 40 grand gig. Hello? You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? It's just crazy. Uh, So I I hear you. I hear you. So you have exactly the same issues we have. On the other side, I have to say, clients are very bad at coming back as well. Oh, awful. And there is nothing worse for the kind of the manager booking side than, you know, to a certain extent, you don't pour your heart and soul into it, but, you know, you've talked to the person, you've said to them that part of why they should go with Maria or Kay is because they get the Maria or Kay service and you've had the conversation and you put together four or five suggestions, you put together the best video, la 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 la, get it over to them, really push yourself, get it over before three o'clock because they're having a meeting at 3.30 and then silence. And you chase it up, oh, I've not heard anything yet. And then dead silence. And, you know, to a certain extent, I don't have time to chase up for feedback, but that, that side can be dispiriting. But, um, I, I had a, an actor client tell me, he said, it's just like auditions. He said, to a certain extent, you do it and move on. You yeah. Know, some, yeah. Something pops and yeah. that's fine. You know? Yeah. 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 You're absolutely right. Listen, okay. I literally could speak to you all day. So <laughs> oh, we'll, sorry. we'll do that another time. Maybe we'll do that when we meet Idris. Yeah. We'll just have a really long chat. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say thank you so much for your time. Best of luck with Andromeda Talent. Um, thank you and so much. keep on contributing to the group. I appreciate it. Okay. And uh, if you've got any questions, you know, about anything, do put, pop yeah. them in. Happy to help you with the US. Totally understand where you're coming from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And honestly, then finding your page and your group and your podcast has been a real boon because I was struggling to find that kind of interaction about speaking that wasn't trying to sell me something or get me to click something. And it genuinely, I think, you know, if you, if you work with speakers or you are a speaker, there's nothing better than listening to good quality content about it. You're an angel. Thank you.